You may be curious as to why my face is not present for such an important video that normally I would be present with a face for. That's because this is a hybrid video, can y'all believe it? I am, uh, so, <laughs> little story time. Um, you know, this set came out about a month ago, um, and you know, it, it did come out a month ago. But my locals didn't receive it on time because we ordered it too late. And uh, now, I, uh, I finally got it, but it's obviously very late. So I was like, you know what, I gotta do a restriction list predictions video. What better set uh, to do it with, what a better product to do that with than opening up a box of VPT-10, oh my god. So yeah, um, we're gonna be just talking about my predictions for the restriction list with some uh, good old VBT10 action. I'm not gonna go into all the cards in depth or anything because I'm sure you guys are already aware of what everything is. But you know, I think it's a good way to fill up time. Or not even fill up time, just talk while we open stuff up. Oh no, uh, the guy from my local, one of my friends from Locals, he was asking me to uh, give him if I had a Shadow Paladin die and... Sally, that's not shadows. Oops, sorry guy, sorry friend. But yeah, anyway, oh my god, does this have an, even have anything other than forces? Pause. Wait, that set, I just opened VBT 11, I realized. Okay, so this has one of each. They're done with a zero promotion already back then, huh? But anyway, <laughs> last set I opened had just axles and, what was it, protect? And no forces, and I realized that, yeah, VBT 11 doesn't have any force clans. Interesting, anyway, so. Restriction list predictions. I think it's pretty obvious, of course, this card is the first sort of culprit suspect. Um, so if you look at the results from the VMC Spring Finals, if you look at the results of WGP, uh, Luard, of course, was a big, 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 you know, shower. A big thing that showed up, big deck that showed up. And, you know, a lot of people still feel that even after the new set release, it still feels a little bit too overwhelming. Um, simply because, you know, the hit with the main was good, definitely was good. It made the deck not be like super degen, which is important, but it didn't make the deck fair still. You know, it's still arguably the best deck. Oh my god, what the hell is this? Aloneros. Goodbye. Farewell. But so the deck is still very, very good. You know, looking at any of those tournaments, it's just pretty obvious uh, to see that it is that insanely good. But so, of course, I think everyone expects a Luard hit because they also said... So, one one quick thing. First, um, of course, they said that the WHP results matter a lot and the VMC results also matter a lot in their decision what to restrict something. And also they said um, that, you know, this is another misconception is that this is an emergency list. This It is not. It is scheduled. In August, they already said the next restriction list will be November. Uh, most restriction lists are scheduled. So, they are scheduled. It's just that sometimes there are no changes. So, I don't think there's going to be a no changes list. I think there will be changes. Oh, Morfessa. Well, I don't think you're gonna get hit. I think you're fine. I think you're fine, but your friend, your partner in crime might get a little adjustment. So what do I think the Luard adjustment will be? Well, I don't think they need to hit anything in the deck itself, because they all kind of function as a group, rather than one card. Uh, outside of Drag Strider, uh, rather than one card, like, powering up everything. But of course... Oh, we got Cradle Marker. But of course, you know, Drag Strider does enable the entire deck, but hitting that would just kill it, which I don't think is worth doing, because Luard is a very popular archetype. You know, people are always hating on it because it's very strong. It's always been very strong. I don't think there's ever a time in Luard's lifespan where it wasn't a great deck. But, you know, people like to hate on it and, you know, kind of like wish it was dead and like wasn't existing in the metagame and all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. It's understandable, but I don't think they're going to do that. It's not a good move from their part. I think what's going to happen is after seeing Vanquish of Bronto, I think they're just going to errata the uh, Drag Heart Luard and just make it so that you cannot gain for like basically after you ride drag strider you cannot gain any more force markers so when you re-ride into the i guess they would have to put on drag strider uh drag driver instead huh so basically that after you have done the superior ride you cannot gain any more force markers that turn that way you only get two force markers per turn because it's the third one every turn bro that fat text box um oh damn let's go bobbed looking looking good but yeah, so I think that's like the best way. Don't get the true ancient dragons. I think that's the best way to hit it without killing the deck. It'll still be really good, um, but it'll be knocked down perfectly enough, in my opinion, to still feel like you'll still feel like a great deck, but it's just not gonna be as overwhelming. Then the other culprits, I would say, from WGP and VMC season, I guess Kagero because it won, so the cross. But I don't think there's any way to hit the cross without killing it. Um, so I think uh, WCC Kai brought up a good point. It's just like hitting its consistency tools. So like Igni Road or any of the other searchers basically I think would do the job. So I could see that happening. Speaking of criminals. <laughs> Speaking of criminals though. 
Oh, we got the grade three searcher for uh, this guy's a prism bird. Very nice. All right, so yeah, so I think that that's probably what's gonna happen to the cross. Uh, the deck isn't, you know, it is pretty stupid, and you know, I'll go on to that topic later on. But I don't think it's worth like obliterating it into the ground. Hey, we got our first VR, PBO Phantom Blaster Overlord. I think it's pretty cheap, but I'll take it. He looks cool, even if I don't sell it. I mean, at least it looks nice. And very nostalgic to a lot of people. I, I played Shadows back in PBO days, you know, it's pretty nostalgic. But yeah, uh, what else? What else, what else? So that's, that's I think, Kagero. It's not going to get a fat hit or anything. Um, but then, moving into the future. Oh, hello, Mr. Starter. Rute. Rute. Uh, looking into the future of future releases that English doesn't have, but Japan does. A lot of people are talking about Gurgut as a problem, and I have been playtesting against Gurgut a lot, and I can say that yes, indeed, does have some problematic components. Two of them that most people would point out are one being Percival, the other being Wonder Azel. Percival, I don't think it will be hit, even though it's a pretty crazy card. Like, it's an insane card, let's be real. Like, just gaining an extra Axel marker like that while Severe Calling is really nuts. But um, I think that it's too recent, and it would look really bad for them to do that. So I think instead they will hit Wonder Azel, because it's the only form of free Superior call that extends Gurgrit just like that and instead like once Wonder Azel is hit people have to play stuff like Kaheda which is basically just you know it's Wonder Azel but with an actual balanced cost more or less but we have Solidari Bangaru so this card became kind of a meme in Japan so it's kind of cool and we have Machining Skata Horn all right cool but yeah so I think that if Gurgrit gets hit it's gonna be just Wonder Azel I don't see them hitting any other, anything else that also shuts down the Azel package um, I don't think hitting Sagromore is worth it either, because it just, you know, it's another extender, but it doesn't extend anywhere near as well as Wonder Azel. What are you? Machining Meteor Bullet? Damn, this set has a lot of filler in it. Apologies. But, you know, I, I think for a lot of people, we just remember, like, Spikes, Gridora, Shadows, and... What else was even in the set? Oh yeah, Tachis. Oh my god, I've opened so many Tachi cards. Gaia definitely has not left the biggest, biggest impression. But yeah, so I think that they're probably going to do that. Uh, with Gurgwit, and then I spoke about Ga about um, the cross earlier, you know, with it being kind of like one-sided and like uninteractive, and a lot of people would say Gavril is the same, and Gavril is really, really strong as the only deck that can just like randomly kill all the meta decks, like it can kill Luar, it can kill Gurgwit on turn 3 easily, um, so a lot of people would say that's also problematic card design, and I actually agree, despite being a very huge, oh, Crit Sentinel, despite being the biggest Gavril fan uh, in all of Luxembourg, <laughs> I, I would definitely say that it is uh, problematic card design. I'm having fun because it's a unit that I like, but I do agree 100% it's problematic card design. I don't think it's gonna get hit though, because it's not topping enough, and I think that, I don't know, Bouchard intended for it to be designed like this, as weird as that is to say, um, and i do not not sure what they would hit. I think if they had to. Oh wait, shit, oh hello, Luard, dude! I was even thinking when I was like planning this video, I was like, if we pull Luard, he's gonna get hit, so... Sorry, bro. I'm guessing you're getting errata. I, I hope they errata it. I want the deck to stay alive. This might it's kind of like Devil's Advocate, but like I want the deck to stay alive. Luard is cool conceptually, and I want it to stay alive to some extent. So don't die, Luard. I'm sure you can make it out. But yeah, so yeah, Gavriel, I don't think it's gonna get hit, but it's definitely like um you know when they do the PDF saying what else they're keeping a uh keeping their eyes on in case it gets too crazy, I definitely see Gavriel being on there, so, you know, uh, fingers crossed. I, I personally don't want it to get hit, but I will completely understand if it does eventually, but that also depends on how big the Bermuda set goes, how hard it goes, that is. Damn, we're on our last pack already, that was quick. Nine minutes only. So yeah, Gavriel, I don't think it will get hit, but it is a, you know, worthy thing to think about. Hey, we finished on the Leofall, isn't that great? Perfect, and ooh, Leofall, Lualis combo. So yeah, um, so I think that's about that. Yeah, I don't think anything else really is looking to get hit. Like, the only two biggest top tiers are Luard and Gurgwit, and I think that, like, you know, those are just the two decks that kind of need to get scaled down a little bit, and once they are, we have a very, very cool metagame. Of course, Bermuda could change that, but I think we'll have a very cool metagame once uh, those two decks have been touched a little bit and just kind of balanced out a little bit, and I think that that way we have a very nice meta, very cool standard meta, a lot of cool competitive and viable decks, and I'm personally excited for that. Um, yeah, and then I think apart from that, like, 
the only thing that Japan is like hyping up is they're all expecting, <laughs> all of Japan is expecting everything to get unreleased. So like uh, Shiroyuki because there's Shiroyuki support coming, Anger Blader because everything else already does what Anger Blader can do, and just all kinds of decks. They're like everything should get unreleased, but I don't think they're gonna unrelease that much. Shiroyuki I could see because it's actually pretty clunky for Yasuya to run more Shiroyukis right now. So I think they'll run like two in the end, even if they put it back to four. But yeah, so I think that that's probably how the restrictions are gonna go. And here's also the result of my box. So very cool. I might do this again. Maybe next time it's a restrictionless season. Just open a box while I talk about it because that was kind of fun. We had like all the good. We got Morfessa, we got Luard, and we got the Leofall. We got like all the good things. That's like Owl, I guess. So yeah, it's a pretty good box. Anyway, that's it. That's all my kind of expectations and predictions for this restriction list. I think TLDR, uh, Kagero slight. Like, a little slap on the wrist, uh, Lord and Gurgwit hit not tremendously, but enough to balance them out, and then the rest will be mostly kept the same. But of course, I will record my live reaction on stream on Tuesday, so you can watch you can watch it live if you want to on twitch.tv slash different fight, or otherwise, you'll see it on YouTube just a couple hours afterwards. So yeah, that's basically it. All right, y'all, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think will get hit or unreleased, or un unrestricted, rather, or, you know, anything else you think about the restriction list. All right, y'all, peace! Bye.